Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today, number eight, number eight, <laughs> number eight. <laughs> I was trying to think of an eight thing, and it hit me like a bolt of lightning, hit me like a shock through the floor. Uh, yeah, I had oh. that. Um, we're back with the with the classic lineup. Catherine's here, just no, no extra guests today. We uh, so Dale Dale couldn't make it this week, and uh, we almost had Matt Moll from Three Men to Baby Yoda, but uh, he had some other stuff to take care of. So maybe next week. But hey, you, you got your A team here, so nothing to worry about. Let's just roll into this, Catherine. How are you going? Oof, that was an episode like so much, so tense, and oh my god, Melchi, Melchi! <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing that you came that that. Uh, that you uh, that you mentioned as soon as I saw that I was like oh I mean you know let's just you know Andy Circus turning up and, and oh uh, Saw Guerrero turning up as well and then like Melchi's like in the clink with him so they're like prison buddies yeah like so they go way back so Melchi going to Scarif with with Cassian yeah again because they're buddies so obviously whenever they get out. They do it together. And well, I hope so. I hope he doesn't leave him behind and then like five years later, Melchie turns up. He's like, oh, hey, remember me? Mm. Um, yeah, but yeah, Andy Circus, like, was like, oh, my God. You know, full on Leo GIF pointing at the screen going, Andy Circus, Andy Circus. Like, well, I I'd think seen that's- Steele put a, a, a just a photo of Andy Circus up on his thing and I was – it was interesting because we've been tweeting earlier in the day about just like, oh, the Force Awakens premiere and like, you know, trading photos of the, you know, like, oh, remembering the good times of the midnight things. And then he put this picture up of Andy. I was like, oh, he's just reminiscing about the good old days of the you Snoke, you know, Snoke theory sucks thing, you know. Of course, there's always more to it than that. Um, yeah. That was so weird, wasn't it? It's like, oh, there he yeah. is. Is he playing Snoke? <laughs> Is there going to be some wackadoo theories? Is somebody going to be like, oh, well, that's that the new, new, new oh. Snoke theories are back. Snoke theories are back, baby. You've, you've just caused me pain. Like Somebody just, tags Steel Sword as Snoke theories are back. Oh, somehow Snoke theories returned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, and Saw Gerrera. What was funny was that I was on an excursion today. So on the bus back, um, Mole did, Matt Mole did message me and he was wondering whether Saul Guerrera would appear. So you got your wish, Matthew Mole. There, there you was go, Saul Guerrera. I- that was for you. Um, sorry, I'm just tweeting Snoke Theories are back to steal right now. Let's see whether he's still awake <laughs> on LA time. You might be able to shift some more T-shirts. Um yeah, I mean, just I mean, we last week we were kind of going, all right. Well, it's going to be a prison. With you know, we we sort of put two and two together from the trailer that there were some shots that looked like a, a prison or some sort of facility and things like that. But uh, mm. it was sort of that plus more. Like I was actually surprised that one. It was really it was a long long episode. It was close to the longest episode, fifty yeah. something minutes. Yeah. So um, it says fifty six minutes. Of course, there's a fair whack of credits included in that but yeah even with that that is the longest runtime so far yeah um, i mean i'm not complaining I'll, no. I'll never complain about more and or um <laughs> they got your letters <laughs> yes they got my my please um yeah and a number of stories and over a quite a Long period of time. Mm, really. mm. So we should basically let's, let's, let's rewind. We'll go, but we'll try and do this in somewhat sort of somewhat order. Um, mm. I'm just trying to remember. Do we start with Cyril or do we start with Cassian? I can't remember. But basically, they're um, but they're at the start. They're both kind of in yeah. their own man-made prisons a little bit here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they pick up pretty much here with Cassian. You know where we left him. Yeah, you he know, gets being taken processed off. and put through the put through the thing and 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 put on the ship and basically they're yeah. just like, oh, you're off to so and so. He's like, oh, where's 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 that? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so Cyril's the fascinating one. So basically, you know, because we talked about it last week, of you going, well, he's working for the, you know, the fuel depot. Like, how does that even, like, what can he even, what damage can he even do there? And it turns out he's just falsifying reports saying Cassie and Andor is selling dodgy fuel, or he's, 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 he was just trying to get a hit on that name to put the name in the system as much as he could, really, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And Deidre was on to him because, of course, she was. She's awesome. Mm, she was all over it. Like, honestly, something must happen to Deidre because if Deidre keeps going the way she's going, she would have shut the rebellion down. Mm. Like, it's it's so weird that I'm on her side because she's right. <laughs> but it's this, well, I don't want her to win because that means, you know, the death of all these people as part of the rebellion and no rebellion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she's right. Yeah. She's, she's the she's... best hair. Oh, my God. There's a new cut. There's a summer cut right there for you, Catherine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically Cyril's, you know, he's in the job. He gets pulled up and they're just like, hey, look, you, you've been <laughs> sending a lot of these reports about Cassie and Andor here. Like, we know who you are. We know what your history is. Like, what's going on, mate? Like, what is what what, what do you know here that we don't know? Um, and he sort of proceeds to doesn't really seem to tell them that much that he doesn't re- they don't really know in the end and they kind of just cut him loose like i'm sure there'll be more to it but um he has a few cracks of just sort of like you know you need yeah. me and he's just like no no <laughs> yeah. yeah like i don't i don't need you like you've given me nothing extra because yeah at most he added the color of the cloak um yeah. And she's not even that impressed that he maybe could identify Axis's name. Now, that was interesting in the ISB meeting. Mm. Um, do you want to get there yet or not No, yet? no, let's go there. Let's, let's, let's run down this thread because it's, it's yeah. a good thread, to, good thread to pull. Yeah, so Deidre's basically laying out the case of, you know, this is this – um, this unit, I still can't remember the name of it, Starlink, Star, whatever. Oh, the thing that Cassian was trying to sell, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the MacGuffin. Yeah. Um, and so she's basically put together, okay, this is the thief, Cassian Andor. Um, he was, they were attempting to capture him on Ferrix. He left in the company of a man that we believe to be at the centre of all of this, you know, suspicious rebellion activity all around the galaxy and they have called him Axis. Mm. Now, I'm sure all our brains went to, ah, the centre of something, like a fulcrum. But or was that now. just me? <laughs> <laughs> so did, did Cassian steal that under the orders of... Um, Luthen, Luthen, no. but not actually realize that he did it. Like, did he get an order from Bix to say, "Hey, go to this ship and steal this thing, and you're about to sell it"? Well, Bix didn't know what um, Cassian was trying to sell. So, has he just inadvertently just got himself? Like, has it just turned out that this isn't even like he, Luthen didn't get him to steal that thing? He's just gone and got it on his own, and yeah. he's got it. So he is involved, but he hasn't ordered this. He's ordered that he's ordered the buy, but he hasn't ordered him to go and procure it for him. Yeah. So they're kind of well, overreaching a little bit because it's not like Luthen told Bix to tell Andor to steal it and then I'll go buy it off him. No, because remember Luthen was the one saying leave it, like as in the unit, and even talking to Cassian before um, the corpus arrived. He was like. I'll take the unit if that's all I can have, but I want to recruit you as well. So he knew who Cassian Andor was even before he got there. Um, he wanted Cassian Andor as part of Aldani and possibly more. Um, so really Luthen came to um, Ferrix to get Cassian Andor. The mm. unit was nice, but... He really came there for the person. But he's just buying stuff that he can on-sell and use the rebellion. Like, he's not actually coordinating these rebel cells as much as they think. He's actually just buying stuff and he's got one particular rebel cell that he's working with. He's not actually the one that's connecting all of them. No, it seems like they have them overestimated possibly- a little bit of what he's doing. 
potentially. Yeah, he's, he's possibly, you know, funding or supplying goods, passing information on because, you know, when we see him later on with Saw, now I didn't get to um, this part in my rewatch, <clears throat> um, you know, so Saw doesn't know that Luthen was a mastermind behind Alabama. That was quite funny where they're just sort of yeah. complimenting each other on a job well done because, <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, obviously they don't want to give the impression that the other one, that they did it if they had anything to do with it. Yeah. And it's obvious that you know, Saw and Luthen have a longstanding kind of relationship and Luthen, yet yeah, sells things to Saw or gives things to Saw and in exchange, Saw performs things. So maybe, yeah, Luthen is some kind of, yeah, axis between cells because they mention... Well, he mentions another cell as well. Like yeah. he seems to know, he definitely knows a few people. Mm. Um, he's probably got some people that he works closer to than others, but he seems to be reasonably well connected. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's just quite fascinating. So they sort of tighten the tighten the boot and then she basically, De- Deirdre gets the... You know, she decides that this is a bit of a lead to go down. There's a there's somebody, you know, Cassian was seen with this guy at least. So you've got that. So let's put the squeeze on the people that uh Lex Vine Cassian and or mm. I mean while well, he's in the clink and no one's <laughs> no one's cottoned on to where he is. Like nobody knows where he is. His mum doesn't know, his best mate doesn't know, yeah. the ex girlfriend doesn't know. Um and he's in this like THX one one three eight esque. Yeah very very white prison where they're quickly assembling <laughs> assembling things and you've got Andy Circus barking at you. Yeah. I it's all very interesting that the setup and all these teams that we saw assembling and I had a thought on this second watch of okay so this particular floor or room are assembling things we don't know what the thing is they're assembling. I had a thought what if other rooms or other levels are uh, taking that thing apart and it's just this and it's just loop. going around in circles so it yeah. just basically gets to the bottom so they kind of gets assembled up and then disassembled on the way down and then back up yeah. the thing again yeah because it's just pointless you like know busy work yeah busy work and you know this pointless you know productivity or you'll get um fried you'll get disciplined you know just as a way of controlling but surely them, they you know, could use like if that's the you know if that's the back axle of a tie fighter or something you know that's that's more used to them than i mean maybe maybe not i mean that's just a, a wild wild theory but they seem to be a I mean, quite interesting like we, like Eve Cassian like you know somehow managed to mark a, a piece or scratch it and then it, you know a day later Re-piece. it turn it turns up again it's just like yeah. <laughs> what the hell man yeah i you know it's that well also, did the whole building like come in and out of the water when they got the delivery of the new prisoners, or was it just no? Shut? I think it was just big. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, because there's the shot where he's sort of like they're lining up and he looks out the window and then you can sort of see down. There's all the like the rows yeah. of all the rows of things there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, you know, like it's that was just my sort of dystopian. <laughs> <laughs> idea like that would be that he wouldn't put it past them no of of just make setting this false you have to do these things yeah you know, making their lives even more meaningless that even if they then sabotage whatever they're building doesn't matter yeah yeah well, it's um, quite cleaned i mean you've got, you've got your prison shower scene too catherine <laughs> <laughs> Two shower scenes in a row. Uh, <laughs> this one's a bit different, though. Yeah, it's not quite this the same. It's full of, full of other blokes, and yeah, it's not quite as not quite as sexy time as the last one. But uh, you know, yeah. well, what, what can you expect? Um, yeah, so uh, that was quite fascinating. Like, like I said, like Melchie's there, and, and Andy Circus is there, and um, there was a couple of other character, a couple of actor, British actors I recognised. The old guy I'd seen in a bunch of stuff before. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll have to look him up. I'm I'm sure that I've seen all of these guys in something else. Um, you kind of go, how are they actually going to break out of this place if that's what happens? Like, I know he, well, there's a bit where he walks yeah. down the stairs and he has a good look at those boots to the right. He's just yep. like, hmm, the boots are there. And there's that moment, there's that really weird moment, you know, when they, um, 
he's getting ready to go in for the first time and he's sort of standing there with his hands and they're all going like, oh, like one of the guys isn't here yet. Like what's going on? Yeah. And, and I'm going, oh, is he going to make a, like is he going to try and grab something? Is he going to try and do like, grab, try, try and grab their cattle prod and he's going to get cattle prodded himself or something? Or... But ex- yeah, like they had a lot of, you know, chat about, oh, you know, the tech level and, and processing takes priority over the tech and and just a lot of that sort of conversations about what's going on that's like uh there's there's something that's going to happen there Mm. that must some vulnerability or or something that they can exploit yeah Yeah. but it's interesting the whole you know interesting in a very awful way in the way that the it's all set up with the competitions you know, between the tables, yeah. between the rooms, to stop seven levels, seven tables, seven guys. Yeah, and it's to stop you know any big group, you know, coming together to you know either not work or or to do something because yeah they are in competition because they don't want to get fried because yeah. I mean the looks on all their faces after we saw them having gone through that was. Yeah, and they're all, like, kept separate. There's no chance to mingle and to talk to other people as well. Yeah. And, like, you're basically stuck with the dudes that you've got at the table and that's that's what you've got. So it's a pretty, uh, you know, they've, they've thought pretty pretty long and hard about it, the Empire, about this. But, um, yeah, it's actually, like, I was kind of like, oh, it's quite clean. You know, everyone gets, like, clean outfits and your room's quite clean, your little bunk. It's actually not a bad little pod as far as, like, you get your own little private pod with a bed and a toilet and... It's all open. I think you just have to go and everybody gets to look. <laughs> if you get, it didn't, didn't seem to be any sort of like privacy screens or anything. No, it did look a bit better than um, Jin's uh, prison cell at the start of Rogue One. Oh, uh, which is on the truck or whatever. Uh, yeah, like and even before that when she's lying in the bed and uh, she's yep. got the drips yep. dripping on her. And there's like the and- other dude. Oh, there's no, there was no um, like other species there either. No. So it was all, all human prison. Yeah. Which was interesting. Yeah. But maybe it's like it's too many variables if you bring other species in. They all work at different paces. They're different sizes, different languages. You can't f- efficiently get them to do, you know, some of them maybe. But, yeah. you know, if you if you stick a hammerhead in there or, some, you know, something else, it's just going to throw the whole thing out of whack. Yeah. And, you know, with that voltage through the floor, you know, be work at the same level, for yeah, different species as they do for humans, and and obviously you know each day they get a new jumpsuit, and you know so there's no personalization yep. of clothing or anything. So yeah, they'd all yeah it'd have to be standard issue. Yeah, it's all pretty grim. <laughs> <laughs> pretty yeah, grim. pretty grim, pretty grim. But it was nice seeing Melshi there. Um, so very curious to see how that uh, how that uh, eventuates now. I mean, we don't really know what's... We were kind of going, well, are, someone's going to find out he's there and they're either going to try and break him out or, or get him killed in prison or or what they're going to do. I mean, there's going to have to be a point where Cassian makes himself indispensable, at least to the rebellion, or perhaps even those people don't make it. Or, you know, Luthan gets busted before that happens or something anyway, but... Um, Cinta and Val make it to um, make it to the planet. Yeah, Cinta, she made it off off Aldani. Yeah, so she's sort of and doing the stakeout, and then yeah. um, then sells Vel, sends Vel away and has that like ice cold like where she's like, oh well, you know, maybe I'll just pretend to be a rich girl like playing. The, <laughs> they're like, oh, you know, harsh. Mm-hmm. I mean, that explains why Val, you know, had all those nice clothes that she could just sort of scrub up into. So you see. Gives a little bit of backstory about where she's come from. Yeah. And, yeah, so on Ferrix, um, Marva is sick but looking at ways to help the rebellion. Yeah, do you think but, she's... Yeah, she's not sounding good. No. Do you think that she's sort of starting to lose her marbles a little bit as well or she's just getting a little bit hyperfixated perhaps? Yeah, hyperfixated, I think, yeah. Um. Mm. Yeah, I do worry about what's going to happen to her. <laughs> um, yeah, it all sort of starts to go down there, doesn't it? So you basically got, you know, the ISB looking for Cassian 
and Luthan's people <laughs> looking for, for Cassian as well. And they're all kind of eyeing off the same people, basically, you know, so they all kind of, you know, seem to be suspicious of Bix and, and Andor's best mate and his mum. So, yeah, it's not boding well. There's a lot of sort of, like, the walls are closing in a little bit, weren't they? Which is weird considering he's already locked up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, so Bix sent out the radio message you know, asking where Cassian is because Marva is sick and that sort of, and then that forces Claire to shut down their um, receiver. But did that then lead to Bix getting captured? So is and that how they found them? Because the signal changed or is it just, they just gave, um, like, they just gave them up? Because they seem to know so, where to go. Yeah, well, they got the, like, shop owner first, so the place where um, Bix goes to get the, um, to use the radio. Yep. They they had him in there first. And I got this here on the second watch that as part of that ISB boardroom scene, Midra's asking for a whole lot of, you know, equipment and funding. And in that, I can't remember the words she used, but there was like a, like a, code droid and all these other things to like look for signals and read signals right so she was you know asking for all those things to be deployed on ferrix in that look in that search for cassie and andor because in the hope that he would then lead them back to luthan yep 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 so i don't know whether the shop owner gave up bix possibility or they just know of um bix's connection to cassian already but i and they, and they don't even know that he's connected to the robbery as well that's the crazy thing as well no, <laughs> so they don't know like, about that he's just part. leaving like a trail of destruction everywhere he goes this bloke your your boy cassian is just leaving a trail <laughs> of human misery and, and destruction everywhere he goes really yeah uh, that they don't know that he's part of Aldani. You don't and know he's in prison. They don't there's a whole bunch of stuff he doesn't they don't yeah. know, yeah. And, you know, his fellow prisoners, you know, are asking him about the PORD. You know, we noticed a month ago all our all our sentences doubled. Yep. You know, is it you know, because of this, because of something on Aldani and Cassie's like, Yep, don't know anything about that. Yeah. Well, I guess it's just a thing where it's like they think it's, it's the biggest thing that's ever happened to them and most people are just like, uh eh. Well, it's like, you know, it's a good segue to the Mon Mothma party where people are just like, oh, well, what are you going to do? They're just cracking down on the riffraff. So, I mean, that's the thing. They're all like, going, oh, everybody must be outraged that this has happened. And they're just like, as, you know what? It hasn't actually come up. Like, I haven't even... I mean, I know Cassian's wrapped up in his own thing, so he probably wouldn't notice as much. But at the same time, it seems like the general public are just sort of, you know, somewhat indifferent to it, really. Yeah. The, the whole, yeah, you know, so what if they, you know, double the sentences and prosecution? What what does that matter? You know, like our security has got to be protected. <coughs> you know, like it's this, you know, non-targeted just blanket, yeah, sentences double. Yeah. D- you know, every infraction will just have this huge penalty. Yeah, it d- doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. So we get to the to Mon Mothma having another one of her parties. So she's 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 been hitting the party scene pretty hard, um, and it's sort of she's at the start. And it's quite funny. She has this like sort of cocktail with a little like worm in it or something or a piece yeah. of vegetable that goes all fizzy or whatever. But she's off the booze by the sound of things. Husband not so much. Um, and then the other bloke turns up again. He must like the, the husband must be so suspicious. <laughs> he's just like, although I think yeah. he's, he's probably just like, well, maybe she'll lighten up or you know. Whatever, I've probably got my own thing going. He's probably got his own thing going on as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Perrin is like, oh, yeah, of course, Tay is turning up. And even um, Leidra, um, Mon's daughter, I think she's like, oh, yeah, you're here in Coruscant again. Yeah, you're here all Stopping lot. by a lot. What, a, what is it in Muriel's wedding? Oh, what a coincidence. It's that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a pool fire from the Muriel, oh. Muriel's wedding fans. Muriel's wedding fans in the. In the uh, Good old Bill Hunter. Yeah. Um, so it was a little bit of that, but at the same time, I guess she's just like, if they think that that's all that's going on, that's probably good. So I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, well, if that's what they basically think the worst of me or what I'm doing, then whatever, you know, and we get a little bit more backstory about them that they got married at 15 as well. 
Yep. Jeez. Apparently that's tradition in so an arranged getting a little marriage. close to the Game of Thrones-y, isn't it, really? It's sort of like, oh, yeah, goodness. A little bit uncomfortable, yeah. Probably explains a few things about, you know, why she married, <laughs> married that guy. Yeah. Um, yep. So, uh, yeah, good luck with that. But they get a little bit more, you know, they get a little bit closer talking about moving some money around and things as well. And, um, yeah. There wasn't um, too much else from that, really. There wasn't sort of any sort of it, m- major stuff that came out of it. No, it was more, you know, that you know, even he's having some trouble with the banking regulations, like moving money is difficult. Um, and, you know, Mon Mothma's trying to get support in the Senate, you know, for saying, you know, the emperor has overreached and no go. Yeah, they're just like he's no he's called the emperor. Emperor, what do you expect? He's gonna emperor. <laughs> like it's 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 yeah 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, the ex- that look at them in this absolute lap of luxury with this. Well, they're just cutting between view. Cassian in the in the prison, yeah. basically. Yeah, where he's eating out of a tube. <laughs> yeah, with no flavor. So yeah. if you come, what is it? If you if you, you finish top, you get flavor. Yes. Yeah. So you finish last, you get fried. You finish top, you get flavor. I wonder what flavor though. Boysenberry or something, maybe. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm trying to think of what else. What else happened? Well, obviously, at the end, we got the we got. Well, we got the shot of two tubes. They weren't they weren't on Jeddah. They were on somewhere some other planet. Yeah, seem um, to have a pretty similar setup though. Something Milo. I did notice the word Milo. You're like, ooh, a nice um, cup of Milo, a cup yep, of Milo before yep. bed. Yeah. Uh, so again, I didn't get to this bit in my second watch, but saw mentions you know, a whole lot of other groups that obviously have. Uh, doing sort of rebellion activity as we would think of it, like the separatists and other groups and other groups, and and Saul wants no part of. Well, he was he was just people. like those people are dirty separatists. I don't want to, you know, I I, I yeah. don't want anything to do with them. So it's kind of funny that they still haven't clearly, they're still kind of holding the old grudges and stuff as well, basically. Um, yeah. So I wonder whether we're going to, yeah. I mean, I wonder whether that's just. We see Saw Gerrera and he pops in again a little bit or whether there's a whole B-plot of this this other job that basically that Luthen's going to pull. Like, it seems like he's ready to move on to do, to do the next thing, basically, isn't he? Yeah, that there's someone else has hatched a plan but can't execute it. So, yeah, he's trying to find a group of people who can. and He's got X-Wings as well. Yes, yes, so... Um, Early versions of X Wings or that very beat up X Wing, yeah, yeah, because he's like, oh, you need air support. Like we can't do, it. yeah, we need some air support. We don't have it that here. Um, yeah, it was good. Good seeing um, Forrest Whitaker back, slotted right back in. Had a bit of the crazy eyes going again in certain places as well. Like you know, yep, <laughs> Forrest Whitaker, he's loving it. Yeah, I think it. he was happy to be happy to be back. I think I think he probably still felt he. I think he probably got quite a lot cut out of Rogue One, so he's like, "Oh, it's good to be back." Yep, in old crazy pants. Saw. Um, so would, I do, do, do we s- wonder? Sorry to interrupt. Did we establish where the Jin Urso would be there then, or she have left by then? Because five years, isn't it? She's she's not twenty though. She's older than that, and she left at fifteen, so yeah. she would have been gone by then. Yeah, I think. Oh, now I'm drawing a blank. Um, but, yeah, she would have left him or he left her before this. Um, yeah. Uh, She's about 25-ish yeah. in Rogue One, isn't she, roughly? Oh, younger. But take. Meant to be younger, but the ages in Rogue One are just – look, I love Rogue One, but the ages that Jean and Cassian are meant to be are kind of ridiculous based on the ages of the actors right. um, at the time. So – I, I'm taking all those ages with a little grain of salt, to be perfectly honest. Um, but well, anyway, you know. yeah, she would have left um, Cassian yeah, before this. Not Cassian. <laughs> <laughs> On the brain. 
on the brain. Also, a good episode if you like uh, Diego Luna's feet as well, too. I don't know whether you're a, a feet kind of girl. I'm not a foot person. <laughs> a foot person. But that's but, your bag. Yeah. Lots of feet work this week as well. Yeah, yeah, a lot of dirty feet. Um, I would have thought the floors would have been cleaner, but anyway. Well, I guess um, you got a lot of people shuffling, shuffling on yeah. there, but um, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think if, we, if we've covered everything. It was sort of, yeah, it really took the time to linger on, it, it, sort of lingering on the whole prison system of, of really kind of making a point of like, this is a pretty, they're on a pretty tight ship here. You, you, you're basically doing busy work all day. You don't really get time to interact with other people, barely even within your own team, really. Yeah. You don't even really seem, it's not, it doesn't even seem like they're even really like chit-chatting or anything. No, they can't. Yeah, and and I think you know the bringing Cassie into that room, like seeing the processing, essentially that was interesting. But yeah, we lingered on things, heard a lot of dialogue. And it's like okay, surely this is going to come back into play mm. because. Nothing has been thrown away. Oh, look, I have no doubt that there is some genius escape plan or yep. something in here, whether it's something that Cassian comes up with him by himself or with the help of the rest of the team or him and Melchi or whoever, whatever it is, or whether it's because outside forces, whether it be Val and Sinter or someone else blows a big hole in the size of <laughs> the, the facility <laughs> or does something, I don't know, like who knows, it might be, they finally find out where he is and Luthen sends Saw Gerrera there to, to, you know, he's like, actually, target's changed. I want you to blow up an Imperial prison or something like that. And yeah. it doesn't need to be any survivors. I just need to make sure that everybody dies or, yeah. Mm. And, you know, Andy Circuit's saying, you know, I've got, two, what is it, 240-something days left on my... Yep. And they got one more, two more days before retirement, and then he's gonna like. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, they had the, the number on the on the um, cell, didn't they? Yeah, and that was just regular yeah. numbers. That wasn't was it Arabish or whatever it was. It looked like two thousand one hundred and eighty nine days or something. He had. Yeah, and then when we flash back, you know, thirty shifts later, it looked like it. Yeah, thirty one fifty nine. Um, is a is a year a year in Star Wars? Numbers. Is a year a year in Star Wars? Do they is that one of those things that's carried over? Like a year is just three hundred and sixty five days, or is it just kind of fuzzy? It's just whatever. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Yeah, it's just whatever serves the purpose of the story. Don't get too caught on the. Yeah. Tell, tell Star Wars fans not to get too caught on <laughs> in on the detail <laughs> on the details. Um. Yeah, so things are like looking I, good for Cassian, and he, it, that first that first one where he looks like he's gonna crack, you know, where he's sort of like slumped oh, down on the ground and like, oh, he, he's like, oh he's man, he's terrified. Yeah, that first day, he's terrified the whole day, and then he gets to the cell and he's just, oh my god. Because I think he would and, in the back of his head he would have been like, well, I've done prison before, it sucks, but I got through it, I can deal with it. You know, this yeah. is just like, oh, this is like a whole other level of control. Yeah, and six years. Um, and also you think in some ways he's living with that what if someone finds out I was part of Eldani? Yeah. Like that's got to be hanging over his head because, you know, even there in prison, the other prisoners are bringing it up. That's how well known, that's what such a big event it was. He's mm. like, oh, shit, if someone finds that out. And he's... Also, then got to be worried about Marva. What's happening with Marva on the outside? Yeah, because he can't contact her, help her anyway. What's happened to all his credits that he still got? above the uh, stuck in the shower? What oh, has yeah. happened to Nimic's manifesto? Manifesto, like what a damage you left it in the. Well, I don't know. Oh well, maybe the, the girl that he had in the hotel finds it, but I have a feeling he's going to go back. It'll just be sitting there still. But who knows? Like. I mean, we know he doesn't do a six-year sentence because he would have got out after yeah. the Death Star blew up. <laughs> It'd be a different <laughs> story. Um, so we know that there's some, you know, there's no show. So he does. He, something happens. He basically does get out, out somehow. Yeah. But the circum, and that's the good thing. Like that's the thing about, you know, people talk about prequels. Like, well, I already know that Cassian doesn't die, and blah blah blah. It's like, yeah, but 
he's like the only person in this show whose fate that we basically know, you know him and like Saw Gerrera and one Mothma, I guess, to a point, but we don't know yeah. the the details of what they go through or how they got there or how it affects everybody else. And you know, poor Bix got nabbed at the end yeah. by the stormtroopers. Scared for Bix. Scared for Bix. Yeah, things don't look good for poor Bix. She. Uh, she was just looking at that chair, and then like Deirdre's just going, "Yeah, leave him there. I wanted to see." And then she comes in. She's like, "Oh, what are you? What is he still doing here for?" Like it was just <laughs> like just the manipulation God. is just like off the chain. She's the worst, but she's also amazing. Like, like come on, we all stand Deirdre a little bit, even though she is terrible. <laughs> um. So where do we go from here, Catherine? Are we going to get the groundwork of a of an escape next week, and then we get the escape in the in the next episode, or does it all sort I'm, of come to a? I just I, I mean I know we kind of sometimes get the general beats of things a little bit, kind of like oh well there'll be a heist, but we never really get the details of how that happens or what the execution is. And I think yeah, this will the be fact, the same. Yeah, that that nobody knows that Cassian is there, and there's no talk of. You know, within the rebellion cells, of oh, we'll break into a prison and we'll set the prisoners free. You know, and That's... oh, randomly Cassian's there. Yeah, it's no nothing of that. So we don't know what events lead to Cassian getting out. And um, well, Melshi and... being there is a real interesting twist in it. Yeah, to me that reads okay. Whatever happens with this prison break, it will lead directly to them joining the rebellion because Melchie's there. Yeah. Good so, old Melchie. Well, whether Melchie's they're awesome. Well, I don't know. I mean, the same thing is it's like, well, does he help him and then he gets left behind, he come and gets him later on, do they get out together? Do, do, who, who knows? Like it's it's I, I don't want to presume to know. No. But it's it, it's another thing where it's just like once this is done, you're going to look at Rogue One in a different way as well. And like, there's a good chance that you know Melshi will be prominent in season two. There's no reason yeah. why he wouldn't be. You would, yeah. In season two, when I think we all feel by then, Cassian would have joined uh, the rebellion for sure. That Melchi could be going on missions with Cassian, or they could be doing you know, parallel missions, whatever. But yeah, this definitely feels like a building block, and and if there is a prison break next week, I fear for any prisoners left behind. Yeah, you know the the Empire in Andor are really showing the Empire that we all feared, you know, in nineteen seventy seven or whatever. They all you quite know, like, like being pricks, basically, don't they? All of them. Yeah. Yeah, they were kind of yeah. reveling in it, really. They're kind of almost just like, oh, great, we actually get to do things with a bit more impunity now. We don't even have to pretend that we're yeah. we're just here to kick some heads and break some windows and kick some puppies and stuff. And, um, yeah, no. Yeah, the gloves are off. The gloves are off. The gloves are off. So, well, it certainly hasn't slipped in quality. It certainly hasn't s- dropped in tension it, it's all still there it's all still firing Catherine oh it's it's so good it is just amazing the quality of Andor and um yeah there was that article uh during this last week uh, the age or the Sydney Morning Herald about saying mm-hmm. you know Andor is the revelation like yes you know, uh House of the Dragon and Rings of Power are getting the big sort of attention headlines that Andor is the best show of the three, and of course I agree. Um, <laughs> and you tagged Diego that, Luna in it, and he went and retweeted it. Oh my god! Um, but yeah, it's it is so good. Like House of the Dragon, you go, oh yeah, that episode, you know, had bits, and you go, oh yeah, whatever. And you know, I'm a book reader, so I go. Okay, I like that change from the book. Or I go, really? That that change, you're actually making the story make less sense. Um, Rings of Power, you could go. Are you just trying to be twisty turny? Like, why are you trying to look this character look like this that character when they're in fact someone else? And you're just trying for things. 
and or week after week, everything has been amazing. Every character is three-dimensional, well thought out. We understand their motivations. We can be on the side of Deirdre while hating her at the same time. Let's face it, the only person we hate absolutely 100% is Perrin because he's a (laughs) <laughs> beep 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 well less um graphic childbirth in Andor as well you wouldn't have wanted that yeah. childbirth scene in that nice white prison as well that would have been very distressing uh <laughs> so yes well there we go we'll wrap it up that's that's episode eight in the can four to go oh my goodness what a ride we're three quarter we're two thirds of the way through oh. we're in the we've got a month we've got a month of power to 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 go here and um yeah i'm gonna probably log off and i'm gonna shoot this out and maybe i'll watch tales of the jedi if i get around to it if it's not too late and if not i'll just watch it later you know, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm happy you're happy everybody um i know there was star wars news this week with some movie stuff with lindelof and um the lady who directed the ms marvel episodes and stuff we'll get to that when we get to it there's probably plenty of other podcasts that are talking about them in more detail looks exciting hopefully it happens we'll see um anything you want to plug catherine um maybe coming up i might be on star wheels underground on what was it sunday our underworld time? underworld i did the steel thing <laughs> all right oh, yeah dominic and so ben sunday and our our time. crew yeah, um, so they'll be doing two streams this week, um, one about Tales of Jedi, one about Andor. Which one are you on? So, uh, yeah, <laughs> have a random stab in the dark. That'd be hilarious if they uh, did put you on the, <laughs> the Jedi one. So what do you think about uh, Ahsoka? You're like, well, I, I like Ahsoka, but can, can we talk about Andor? I was like, oh, we already did that an hour ago. Like, oh. um, cool. Well, we'll check you out on that. I think I'm going to be on the Scruffy Looking Podcasters this week. Because I have the day off on Monday and they record at the worst possible times. I've taken Monday off because we get a public holiday for a horse race on Tuesday. So I'm going to take the day off on Monday and because they record early in the morning, I'm going to be able to do it. So that's the plan. So hopefully I'll get to catch up with the boys. Looking forward to that. Um, All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for downloading and retweeting and stuff as well. People have been really good retweeting and feedback's been awesome thank you so much everyone who's been listening and downloading downloads have been really good we'll keep going um same time next week Catherine. absolutely all right we'll see you then bye